Uh, frequently, before the game, we um, are planning. We, ha we have this idea that today I'm going to play very aggressively. I want to attack. I want to push my pawns. And this is very wrong assumption. So a lot of times when you play the game, you want to have attacking position, but you must make sure that you get the type of position where attacking is the right plan or pushing your pawns off of your king or expanding uh, expanding your position on the king or queen side is the right and safe thing to do. Let me give you a few examples of... Um, of a good attacking, planning, and good uh, uh, expanding of pawn structure. E4, <coughs> D6, D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, G6, very well known perk defense. Game was played between um, Anand, one of the top players in the world, and um, a Russian GM currently living in Eastern Europe, uh, Alex. Bishop e3, c6, white plays f3. Now you can tell now that the idea of move f3 is to expand on a king side, to go g4 with white, h4. Of course, in this uh, case, white will be canceling queen side, an attack on king side. Let's see how the game developed. After f3, b5, g4. This is still in, we are still in the opening part. h6, preventing g5. After h6, queen d2, bishop g7, h4 for white, bishop b7, bishop to g2. Now, why bishop to g2? Let's notice now that black is not going to castle queen side for quite a while because pawn on h6 is hanging. So white plays bishop g2, and the idea is possibly expand later with f4. Bishop g2 is okay move and um, did not have to be played right at this moment. So black played h5, g5 for white, and knight f to d7. Now, b4, knight e2, and c5. So we knew that originally when white played f3 and g4, there was, there was a plan to attack on the king side and expand and push the pawns off of the king. That's the plan Anand is sticking to. And after c5, white castled, interestingly, short. Now, if white would, had castled long, here, that might have, been, might have been quite dangerous because queen goes to a5, attacking a2 pawn, and after king b1, knight c6, black can develop quite strong attack on queen's side. So white decided to castle short, knight c6, d5, and knight c to e5. Threatening knight c4, so b3 and a5. Now, what I want to talk about at this stage is about this advanced pawns by white on a king side. Is, is, are those weaknesses now? Is white overexposed? The answer is no. And how? that's how you judge those positions. That's what you're going to go by. You see the concentration of pieces on the king side. You see 
that white has more pieces on king side than black. White has more space on the king side than black. So white should be preparing for f4, but of course not right away f4 because knight will go to g4, possibly knight f2 or so, and white still has a chance to expand an attack on a king side. Especially, we have to keep in mind that black eventually is going to have to castle. Castling or long side, canceling queen side for black is not going to be safe because white can always open files by playing c3 and c takes b and opening c file or by playing a3 and a takes b opening a file so that's why expansion on a king side is going to be very handy after black castles uh, short. So what happened is after b3, black played a5 and white played now knight to g3, a4, white plays rook a c1, a takes b, a takes b, and rook a2. Black is trying to um, do some activity, to show some activity. Knight to f2. Now, this move is designed for pushing the f pawn, controlling the g4 square. Queen a5, f4, and black has no choice but play knight g4. And then white takes on g4, black takes on g4, and white plays e5. Now this position becomes already quite difficult for black. black because black is clearly lacking space. Now, why e5 and what would happen if black simply took on e5? which black didn't. What black played here was king d8. Now let's look at d takes e. Um, probable move in this position and most obvious move is f5. So why did white have to play e5 first? In this position, two moves ago, that if white played f5, then black gains the e5 square forever, maybe by playing bishop e5, and this is very, e5 square is very valuable for white. White plays e5, this is typical, typical positional sacrifice uh, of a pawn. d takes e, and now f5. Now e5 square is not accessible for black pieces. So that what would have happened if black took on e5. Now let's look at king d8, that's the game was played, and now white played e6. Black has to take f e d e. And in this position, you see that knight is hanging on d7, bishop is hanging on b7, and black's pieces are not coordinated. King is in danger, so why black plays bishop c3, queen f2, bishop takes g2, queen takes g2, and now black plays knight f8. Um, I think black's position is totally lost because knight is badly placed on f8 and rook is badly placed on h8. e6 pawn is very powerful because it won't, uh, it kind of separates queens and king side. So after knight f8, f5 for white and black did not play g takes f. 
If black plays g takes f, what I think is the best move for white, maybe simple h5. The next move white is going to take the f5 pawn, and g5 and h5 pawns will be very powerful. I don't think black can survive here. So what happened in the game after f5, black played queen a8, exchanging queens. Queen takes a8, rook takes a8, and white played fg. Game is totally decided now. Knight takes g6, and same idea as we, I mentioned just a minute ago with powerful g and h pawns. Uh, black is uh, totally lost now. Knight f8, knight e4, there's a few more moves. Bishop to e5, pawn goes to h6, knight takes to e6, rook c to d1, king d7, and now white goes g6. You see, those pawns are very dangerous. Black is lost, of course. Rook a to g8, g7, rook h7, and rook f7. King e8, rook d to f1. Black plays knight takes g7. Now, this is interesting. Black is giving up the knight, hoping to get three pawns. If white takes the knight, then they get three pawns for um, a knight. They may very well may be alive. However, after knight takes g7, this knight on g7 is not going anywhere because it's pinned. Um, and after knight takes g7, white simply played king g2. Black is in kind of tzuk tzwang position. Rook h to h8. And it looks like white must take now on g7. But they don't. Bishop g5. And black resigned here. There is no defense to rook takes e7. Position is totally helpless. And if knight e6, of course, rook takes e7, winning all the black's material. So what happened here? White did expand a um, great deal on a king side, and they castled on queen side, king side. So, But that was okay, because they had a lot of firepower on king's side, and they had space. So you have to notice that when you have a lot of power, um, a lot of material, a lot of pieces on, on king's, on, on the side you're expanding, so, and you, your opponent is castle on that side, this may be very beneficial. In, I don't think you're creating weaknesses then. The other game, also expansion, on the king side. But this was, this time, white did not castle on that side. White castle on the opposite side. Game between Anand and Latier. e4, c5, knight f3, d6. This is Sicilian, cd, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, a6. This is very well known, probably the most popular uh, variation of the uh, Sicilian Nidorf. Uh, knight c3, a6, f3, e6, bishop e3, b5, g4, h6, queen d2, knight bd7, everything is the opening still. Castles long, bishop to b7, bishop to d3, knight e5, rook h e1, and b4, knight a4, and d5. This already has been played many times. e takes d, knight takes d5, and f4. 
Now, this is, you see, white expanded widely on king side, but they castle queen side. That's a lot easier to do, and almost, and it's almost never dangerous to expand. That's why you castle uh, on a queen side to expand on king side, or when your opponent is not castled yet, you try to push your pawns and try to open position. That's exactly what happened here. After f4, um, black played queen d7. Now, we are not going to get into big details of the position, but after knight takes g4, uh, if black played knight takes g4, it's a very powerful move is knight takes e6. And after knight takes e6, f e, then white can go bishop g6 check. Position um, becomes uh, very dangerous for black. So after bishop g king d7, and um, Even bishop e4 will go here, or f5. Well, or maybe even knight b6 check. Hitting the rook there, and later maybe queen g2 attacking the knights here. We don't want to get in a really tactical complications in this game when we analyze. We analyze how game develops once your opponent is not castled, and when you push like in this position, when you expand in the center or king side, in or king side, we did expand in the center, but in the, in the kings on the king side. But we want to open the center because that's where Black's king is, and that's why f4 is a very powerful move, and it was f4 is a very powerful move, and. Um, Black played queen d7. The idea is, um, of course, if white plays f takes e, then black plays queen takes a4. So what happened in this game? White simply played b3, and now black took the g4 pawn. Here is the position where black has an extra pawn, and it does not look like white has some concrete threats. Believe it or not, this is still opening theoretical position. And um, in this position, white played knight b6. Knight has to take on b6. But before we play knight b6, I, I want to mention one thing here. See, black's king is still in the center. Black is not about to castle yet. And every piece of white is concentrated in the center, and there has to be, there should be, or there is, full compensation for the g4 pawn that white just sacrificed. Knight b6, knight takes b6, and here comes knight takes e6 move. Knight takes e6 is very strong. And um, Black's answer was knight d5. Now, why knight d5? Obviously, Black cannot play f takes e. Now, because then simply bishop takes b6, and White has overwhelming position, threatening bishop g6 check, uh, winning the queen and threatening pawn to f5, and black cannot defend um, their position. So what happened in the game, that black played knight to d5. Now white goes knight c5, black must take on c5, bishop takes c5, bishop takes c5, and this is check. So how do we go king d8? 
How do we know? We cannot calculate as well as computers. Now, how do we know that this position is good for white? White, has whole, white is whole piece down. But position has to be good. Has to be good or our evaluation is way off. The, the reason why it has to be good, you can tell both rooks perfectly placed. Bishop on c5 cuts off black's, black's king. The other bishop is ready to participate in attack. So we have five big pieces attacking black's position. Black, black's pieces are totally discoordinated. So position has to be winning for white. Now, if you play this position and you did not win this, something like some position like this, that's what you that's when you need to look for mistakes. So after bishop takes b4 now black plays king c8 bishop a5 knight g2 f6 c4 for white knight c7 and queen b4 you see here that white has only one pawn for a piece but you see there is no coordination in black's pieces no activity queen is on the file of the rook and black practically lost here um, after queen before still was played queen to c6 bishop to f5 check king b8 and rook to d6 overwhelming activity of white's pieces queen to f3 and uh, and now the end bishop takes c7 check king takes c7 rook e7 check that's how white gets their piece back getting into totally winning position rook takes b7 king queen takes b7 rook b6 the only move is uh, rook a7 now white is going to win the queen back and they're going to have queen for two rooks but black is going to be losing most of their pawns queen d6 check king a8 rook takes b7 king takes rook takes b7 for white and now king takes b7 and now the final blow bishop has to come into the game and since bishop cannot go to e4 since knight is on f6 white goes bishop h3 with the idea of bishop g2 and uh, black is going to have no defense so what black did is they played rook e8 actually they played rook e8 and white played c5 with the idea of bishop g2 check and queen c7 mate or uh, even queen b6 check followed by queen takes a, a6 mate and black resigned this is a very good example of planned attack and expo exp expanding on king's side when it was totally safe and opening the position where the king is king was in the center black's king so that's why position had to be open in the center and when you sacrifice peace to open every file in the center that can be well compensated by the activity of your pieces now let's uh, this shows us that you can be aggressive and active and go against your opponent's king's position only when position requires you to do that when you see 
when you see your position, your king's position, your opponent, opponent's king's position in the center, and you see that he is not developed well, so you have to go for it. You must go for it. Frequently, this is the safest way to play, to attack your opponent, because next game now, next game, white played one of the variations of Sicilian defense that I was advocating for many, many years now. A slightly different variety of it, but it's a Grand Prix attack, knight f4, f uh, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop c4, e6, d3, knight e7, castles, castles, bishop b3, knight bc6, queen e1. Now, <coughs> white sort of expanded on king side already. What black wants to do, they want to expand on a queen side. Queen goes to e1, white wants to play queen h4 and attack on king side. So what happened after um, queen e1, knight d4, knight takes d4, pawn takes d4, and white plays knight e2. And again, white's goal is to play f5. And you see the dark square bishop opens, queen goes to h4, and you have to notice the aim of the pieces. White has good attacking chances. So what happened after um, knight takes d4, cd, and white played knight e2, bishop d7, bishop d2. White concludes development, rook c8, putting rook on open file, king h1. Now this is very interesting plan. If there, were, if there is one piece that is not placed actively by white, it's this knight on e2. We much rather have this e2 knight to f3, on f3. So that's what the king h1 move is about. White to, wants to play knight to g1 and knight to f3. Activate the knight and possibly play e5 later. So king h1 was <coughs> played by white. a6. Knight to g1 as expected. <coughs> knight to c6. Knight to f3. King to h8. This is understandable move because when white plays f5, black does not want to be on this diagonal with a king. Or black may want to play f5, and after ef, they don't want to be pinned if king was on h8. The pawn on e6 would have been pinned. So king h8 is kind of prophylactic move. Queen f2 b5. Now a4 was played by white. That's a very good move. And let me explain you why this is a good move. If white makes some neutral move, like continuing their plan, then black will go a5. And you will see that bishop on b3 in some kind of a trouble now. And if you go a3, trying to save bishop, then maybe black will go a4, and after bishop moves, knight will move somewhere, possibly a5 or e7, and c2 will be target. So what white does here, by playing a4, uh, white prevents a5 move for black, and stops knight a5 as well, because knight a5 in this position is not very good because bishop may simply take on a5 and then a takes b, attacking queen, and then maybe d4 pawn hangs. See, d4 pawn is going to be hanging. So right now, black does not have 
an opportunity to play knight a5 so after safely so but if they don't play knight a5 then what they going to do white is going to play a b a b and then they will never be able to play knight a5 and white can expand on a king side so they don't have a5 a4 and they don't have counterplay on a queen side so therefore that's the only chance to play knight a5 and they went knight a5 bishop takes a5 queen takes a5 a b queen takes c4 queen takes b5 now bishop c4 uh, well, this was not necessary move. Knight takes d4 was possible also with advantage for white. But bishop c4 is a good move. White plays queen takes b2 and rook takes a6. Now d6 pawn is hanging. Black goes rook a8. White sacrifice, black sacrifices the d6 pawn. Rook takes d6. I don't think there is a good way for black to play this position. Well, if they play rook c6, for example, protecting the pawn, then rook a7. And the, I want you to notice here that rook is very active on a7, a bishop is active, and pieces on a king side also very active. White's next move can be f5 followed by knight g5. This is going to be decisive attack for white. So black is trying for some activity. Rook a8, rook takes d6, and bishop a4. But after bishop a4, they're attacking c2 pawn, and white goes f5. Now it's time to come back to the main plan, which was on attack on the king side. And queen h4 may be coming with f6 idea and knight g5 idea. Black is totally defenseless here. After f5, queen takes c2, queen h4, king g8. Now, king g8, the idea of king g8 move is on f6 to play bishop h8. So after king g8, uh, white played f6. This is a good move. This is definitely the winning move. The other option was fe is just as winning. White chose f6, bishop h8, knight g5, h5, and rook takes e6. Now, this is tactical solution for white. Let me show you another solution. <coughs> Another solution here, how to win this position, in a very simple solution, is to play e5. And you treat this position like your position with extra piece. Bishop on h8 will never come into the game. And now you can just play trying to exchange pieces and grind them down and uh, then win like end game with extra piece on h8. An unplayed knight g5, h5, rook takes e6. <coughs> of course, it's also very good because after fe bishop takes e6, you see that black's king has no moves. <coughs> so black played bishop b3, bishop takes b3, queen takes b3, rook c6. Queen takes d3, and now let me tell you this, black has complicated the matter. What they should have done, probably, e5 was simpler. However, when you have totally winning position and enormous, enormous positional advantage, you have a luxury to mess up just a little and still maintain winning position. Rook a2, e5. Nothing is changed regarding the bishop on h8. It was dead, and it is dead. e5, queen d2, rook to g1, 
queen e2, attacking e5, pawn, knight f3, d3, rook c2, e1, queen f2, queen c4. It's a black, white chose very bumpy road to win this position. Uh, queen c4, rook to e2, queen takes d3, rook takes e1, rook takes e1, rook b8, rook f1, rest is not interesting, white has overwhelming positional advantage with extra pawn and dead piece on h8, queen a2, h3, rook a8, we, I want to go through this part real quick. h4, queen e6, queen d4, rook c8, rook d1, and uh, here black played move that loses queen immediately. King h7, knight g5, and they resign, but I don't really think uh, that would have mattered if they played any other move. Very well played and planned game by a nun. I cannot say the same very well planned game, but I cannot say it was very well executed, maybe in the end, but was executed good enough to bring it uh, home. So White won this by good planning and <coughs> after the opening and uh, staying being consistent. Now let's look at the game that is quite different by the idea, but you can see how can attack be, this attack in this game and planning was on a very, very high level. E4, E6, this is between Anand and Timon. D4, D5, Knight C3, Bishop b4, e5, knight e7, a3, bishop takes c3, pawn takes c3. Now this is one of the, probably the most popular variation of French defense. c5, queen g4, castled, bishop d3, f5. This still, we are still in the opening. That's why we don't want to discuss it in great details. Rook takes f6, bishop g5, rook f7, queen h5, g6, and queen d1. Now you can tell that black has problems with their dark squares. e5, h6, f6. And black does not have dark squared bishop. That makes their position very suspicious. Their only plan here, and how, we, how do we assess this position? Their only plan and only hope if they can open the center and show some activity. If this does not happen in next few moves, then white is going to conclude development is going to be all over. And it's going to be just a matter of time when white will take advantage of these weaknesses. So what happened after queen d1, black plays knight bc6, maybe e5 is the plan. So white plays obviously knight f3, c4, bishop e2, queen f8. Queen c1 and knight f5. Poorly played by black. Timon fails to realize that without e5, he cannot survive in this position. So maybe instead of playing queen f8 in this position, maybe he should have played something like queen d6, hoping for e5 next, opening the bishop and bringing the a8 rook into the game. But black never moved e6 pawn. 
If they never move the e6 pawn, then they will never have activity of light square bishop, and dark squares can eat them, eat black alive. So, queen c1, knight f5, h4, h6, bishop f4. This is it. Now e5 square is safely occupied. There will be no e5 for black, and there is going to be no life for black. So bishop f4, bishop d7, knight e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5. Knight to e7, queen to e3, and you see black has tall pawn on d7, that's not like a bishop supposed to be. Knight c6, bishop to g3. Rook e8, h5, and after g5, white simply castled. e5 has been delayed, and now it's not possible anymore. On e5, black does not have enough support for e5. Knight to e7, and bishop to e5 returns, knight to c6, bishop to h2. Of course, white does not exchange this dark square bishop for knight. Bishop h2, now rook g7, and now bishop goes to g4. Just activating second bishop, queen f6, rook a to e1. There is too late for e5, white is fully developed and they are ready for final assault, possibly f4, in very near future. Queen to e7, attacking a pawn, a4, b6, why black starts ma making pointless moves, because there are no moves that can make a lot of sense anymore. They are totally passive. Queen h3, knight d8, rook e2, Bishop takes a4, and now f4. So finally black won a pawn, but their knight is passive, bishop is passive, and rooks are passive. And after f4, white just breaks in and uh, ends the game. Possible threat is f5. Bishop d7, f5, threatening f6 now. Rook f7, and rook f to e1. You see how much pressure on e6 pawn. Uh, rook f to e1, rook f6, bishop to e5. And that's it, that's as much as black can uh, defend. So they play rook takes f5, giving up an exchange. Bishop takes f5. E takes F, and now simple bishop C7. And after knight E6, queen takes F5. White won exchange, white broke through, they opened the files. You can, black could have resigned right now. They played queen F7, queen F7, queen takes F7, king takes F7. We are in the end game, they prolong game all the way to end game, totally hopeless. Bishop d6, a5, rook f1 check, king g7, bishop e5, king g, king g7, bishop e5 check, and few moves later, uh, black resigned. They could have resigned right now. It's it's not uh, necessary to go to the end of this game. This was very well planned game for white on a dark square and develop activity. The plan, what was white's plan if you wanted to put it in words? To occupy dark square, guarantee the activity of the pieces, taking space advantage, and then opening the position was very well executed and very good result. On Black's part, we can say that Black had 
very little to show some kind of some kind of activity, no counterplay, and they were passive all game. And when you are passive against players of world class players, <coughs> never ends well. Never. Maybe you play someone if you play some weekend tournaments, you said, Hey, that's not exactly true. I played the game, I was passive, I defended very well and I won. That's not the strategy that can get you too far. So remember one thing, if you cramped, you have to look for activity. This is like a general rule. You have to look for activity for breakthrough, for counterplay. You cannot be passive for long because sooner or later, they're going to get you. Sooner or later, what I mean, if they don't get you on the level you are now and you want to improve in chess, once you improve, they are waiting for you. Thank you very much.